Thanks to Nizi Filters for sponsoring this long exposure photography course. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the second episode of this long exposure photography course. We are in Liguria, we are in Cinque Terre and precisely we are in Vernazza. The weather conditions are a little rough and especially the Ligurian sea is a little rough. But I love these conditions. I love clouds. I love rough water for seascape long exposure photography. In the first episode, we saw the long exposure photography workflow step by step. And today we will focus on how to choose the proper ND filter, how to choose the proper exposure lens. At the end of this video, we will have a dedicated uh, photo assignment. So before moving forward, let's have a look to the first photo assignment pictures and see who won the long exposure circular filter skit. One of the first advice that I love to repeat over and over again to landscape photographers and especially to long exposure photographers is to arrive to your spot as soon as you can. Give yourself a lot of time. You need time to find uh, the composition that will inspire you the most and once you find it, you will need time to try different exposure lengths. As you can see, my tripod is still attached to my back because before setting the tripod, I want to scout around. I want to find the right spot for my composition. I love to be very close to the water. I love to have my foreground very close to the camera. And when it comes to compositions, we will actually talk more in depth about composition, long exposure photography in the next episode. So this is my spot. I love these rocks in the foreground and I love the coastline that becomes a leading line in my composition.
So once I refined uh, my composition, I can definitely set my camera on the tripod. And trust me, refining the composition takes time. And you want to go through this process with calm, without rush. You want to be inspired. So come early, take your time. So now my camera is set. And the first thing I will do is to set my filter pouch and my remote shutter release. I'm focusing on the rocks that are about 10 meters, maybe eight meters from me. And I think that this will allow me to have a pretty sharp image throughout with F8. I'm using aperture priority. My base shutter speed is one over 30 right now. My ISO is at 64, the lowest possible with this camera. I'm ready to take a test shot. This is my image. As you can see, the histogram is fine. I could move it to the right a little more. So let me go into manual mode. I will keep F8, I will keep ISO 64, but I want to try a different base shutter speed. I want to give a little more time. So from one over 30, I'm going to one over 20. Let's see. And you can see now that my histogram is a lot more onto the right, not clipping on the left. I found my base shutter speed 1 over 20. This is what I'm going to use. So the most delicate part, the reason why you might be here now has finally arrived. We need to decide which filter to use, which exposure length. So let's use the ND calculator app. I will set my shutter speed at 1 over 20 and we can see that with the three stops we will have 0.4 seconds with six stops i will have a 3.2 seconds with 10 stops my exposure length is at 51 seconds and with 15 stops i actually will have 27 minutes and 18 seconds but let's see how our scene how the water will change using these different filters so the first filter is the three stops. You should be able to see that uh, we are not going to darken the image too much. I close the viewfinder. I'm using mirror lockup. With the first touch of the shutter button, the mirror will move up. And with a second, I'm taking a picture. But as you can see, the water is very rough. And uh, with the three stops and the filter, we are not able to lengthen the exposure enough. Let's try with the six stops. In this uh, long exposure circular uh, filter kit, the six stops is actually also polarized. And you can see, I am moving, you might also see my fingers, but I'm moving the polarization. You can see, how the polarized can limit the reflections on the water or actually let them through like in this case. Of course, I prefer not to have those light reflections. So I will set the polarization right here. I will set my exposure length to three seconds. Although now it looks like we have maybe a little more light. And I think that here the histogram is just perfect. We can see a little more movement in the water, but it's not, of course, that ethereal look, that silky water yet. So let's try the 10 stops. Since I clearly noticed that we have more light right now, I want to double check my exposure, going back to aperture priority. And as a matter of fact, I can see that uh, the exposure is now 1 over 50. Now it's 1 over 60. 1 over 60 with the 10 stops is a 15 seconds exposure. Let's give it a try. We might also have some colors after all. Go back to manual mode and I will set my 15 seconds. I'm checking the histogram and I can see the 15 seconds is not enough. 
Let me increase the exposure to 20 seconds. As you can understand, this process of trying different exposures is very important. And it is also very important to do it with a constant light. You don't want to arrive at the very last minute at sunset or in the golden hour when the light is changing very fast. You will not have the time to do all the exposure length tests that I'm doing. I will never get tired to tell you, get to your location as early as you can. This will also give you the time to connect with the place, to enjoy your process, to enjoy your experience. This is really part of the journey of long exposure photography. This is what it is. Let's double check this exposure. I'm very happy with it. I like this histogram and I also like the effect on the water. It's pretty cool. All right, shall we try the 15 stops? Double check the exposure, one over 50. With the 15 stops, my exposure length is going to be 10 minutes and 55 seconds. We will make it 11. Back in manual, I will need to set on bulb mode. I'm setting the remote shutter release at 11 minutes. Mirror lock up and timer. It is very important to remember that you will need to close the viewfinder if you are not using a mirrorless. If you're using a DSLR, the light will leak through the viewfinder and you will see some strange ghosting effects into your photo. In some of my previous videos, I'm sure that you noticed that uh, when I'm shooting towards sunset, not always I follow the recommendation of the ND calculator app. And this is because the light is changing very fast, especially right after sunset, it gets dark really, really fast. So I usually try to add time to my exposures. I want to say I lengthen it by experience. So I round the recommendation to a longer exposure length. But it is exactly the opposite if you're shooting at sunrise, because as you can imagine, right after the sunrise, but also right before, your scene will get brighter and brighter. And so, especially in a very long exposure, if you use the recommendation of the NDA calculator app, you will end up with an overexposed image. So possibly it is much easier to get started if you are at the beginning to take long exposure photos during daytime, at least with a constant daylight. While waiting for this uh, exposure to finish, I would like to launch the second photo assignment of this course. This is what I like you to do. I like you to take two exposures, two long exposures, a short one and a long one. The short one will be between one and five seconds. The long one should be more than one minute. As a practice, I like you to keep the same exact composition, the same frame, and post both photos. We will all be able to see the difference of the mood and how exposure length has an impact in your images. Post your images on uh, my Facebook group, Atelier Photo Club Landscape Photography. I created uh, a second topic, so remember, to tag the topic, which is called the uh, LEP Photo Assignment 2. You can also post your images on uh, Instagram, use the hashtag uh, Atelier Photo Club and the hashtag LEP Photo Assignment 2. In the next episode, I will uh, select some of your images and I will show it in the video, but I will also select the winner of this kit 
that I've been using today. The Neasy Long Exposure Silk Color Filter Kit. So post your images. I am looking forward to see your work. So the exposure is finished. Let's see what happens. Oh, it looks cool and the histogram looks good. You can see that uh, we have been able to calm down the Ligurian Sea. The water is smooth, is uh, silky and white, and these are the kind of images that I like. You can see how busy the composition becomes when the water is so choppy. There's too much going on. And then instead we have been able to smoothen the water and simplify this composition is much cleaner, is a lot more serene, is basically what I envisioned when I saw this scene. So as you can see, long exposure photography can be a long process, but I like it very much just because of that. Of course, I don't test every single filter every time. I've been doing this for a while and usually I know what kind of uh, exposure works for me in a different scene. But I still do a good number of tests so that when the light is right, when the sun is setting, I know exactly what is going to be my final setup. And I will minimize the margins of error, although shit happens all the time. The bells are telling me that we are done for today. I hope that this video was useful and that you will have a better understanding of what the different filters will actually do to your photos. In the next episodes, we will talk about more advanced uh, use of filters. We will use uh, the square system. We will use multiple filters at the time. We will be supported by the use of graduated ND filters. And we will also talk a little more in detail about composition in long exposure photography. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I'm always interested in reading your comments. And if you have some friends that might like long exposure photography too, share this video with them. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.